As I read your notes, an awful lot of your tick points are negative. Uh, you think corporate uh, profit growth is going to slow. You think we're going to have more interest rate hikes this year and maybe three more next year. Uh, that the earnings comparisons are going to get tougher, not easier. And yet, and yet, you think the S&P 500 and the U.S. market is going to motor higher this year uh, and into, well into 2019. Explain. So... You're right. I do think earnings are going to sort of decelerate. The pace of growth is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 8 to 10 percent next year, not the 23 percent growth that we expect in 2018. But I do think, though, as we go forward, the Fed's going to take, you know, this, this sort of moderate approach to raising interest rates. And I think the market's going to be able to handle that. We're still at a low interest rate environment. We still have full employment, so the consumer should be able to continue to spend. There's still some money left overseas, not a great deal of it. But, you know, that money is still going to work its way back home. And I think the, the market, as you look into next year, 2019, the market's only trading at about 15.4 times, maybe a little bit lower today. So I think there's still more upside potential. I think there's upside potential left in this year. As a matter of fact, I think we could get close to 3,000 on the S&P 500, especially if we can get this trade issue resolved. Uh -huh. But I think as we approach the year end, we, we start to pull back a little bit. 2875 is is our number for, for 2018, All which right. is about a 7.5% gain. Not a bad year. Ben, how do you react to what Bob just said? And, and I see in my notes about your stance mm -hmm. that you are sort of pulling back on risk exposure, but not running away from it at a sprint. So we're also constructive uh, with caveats, which I think is, is natural in this environment. <clears throat> with all the trade rhetoric uh, about a trade war, with tightening financial conditions, with your usual late cycle worries, I think it's easy to overlook the fact that actually the fundamental environment is sound here. The reality is that global growth is accelerating going into mid-year. It's a slightly more fragmented than it was last year, but solid. it's a solid fundamental foundation for earnings growth but here. There's, but there's something that the fundamentals don't measure, isn't mm -hmm. there? And that is sentiment. Mm -hmm. So, And sentiment feels like it's wobbly. Two, two notes, two, two things on that. One is that we're arguably in a very elevated period of headline risk here. So with regard to trade wars in particular, you have China, you have Europe, you have NAFTA erupting over the weekend, you have the WTO being brought into this as an overarching uh, target here. Uh, it's not our baseline expectation that you're going to get all of those boiling over at the same time here. So we think this, in terms of headline risk, uh, is a very elevated period, which we'd expect to dissipate gradually uh, over time. The other thing is, uh, and to, to your point, sentiment matters when it starts being effective. So, so far we, uh, we have anecdotal evidence that things like trade worries are seeping in to certain sectors like the auto sector. Uh, you know, from China's perspective, right. we had PMIs over the weekend where new export orders were down, so people are pointing to right. that. You can put together a handful of anecdotes suggesting that sentiment is starting to be effective, but uh, not quite at the point where we see damaging to our baseline outlook. So, Bob, on the road to that 11.9% high for 2018 on the S&P 500, which sector do you want to be in? Do you want to be in big cap tech, which really uh, gave the S&P 500 the bulk of its gains so far this year? So let's assume that Trump could actually work out a trade deal. So, yeah, the, uh, the, the uh, cyclical space, things like consumer discretionary technology, energy, I think is the, is the place you want to be in. You could take a look at industrials as well. But I think as we sort of move closer to 2019, there's going to be a bit of a rotation. I think people are going to start to move to a little bit safer haven. They're going to realize that earnings aren't going to grow at the same pace. And again, we have a full employment situation, so we could be facing wage inflation. And, you know, some of that repatriation of cash is just not going to be there because it's already moved back home. So I think you're going to see a little bit of a rotation into things like consumer staples, maybe telecom, maybe even a little bit more into real estate and utilities. But I don't think people give up the, the discretionary, you know, more cyclical type of sectors in the economy. So that's where I want to be going into about 3,000. And then as we get there, I want to pull back and maybe rotate some of my 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 uh, my profits into some of the more defensive areas of the market. Would you take a more defensive stance towards the end of the year in 2019? I think there's a certain risk to that. So if you are expecting a bit of a bounce from from the elevated levels of uh, of, of volatility here, 
based on trade concerns, uh, you know, you probably want arguably a little bit more of a cyclical uh, exposure. We think about that as a, as a balancing act, and at the end of the year, you want to, you want to have a balanced exposure. Uh, at the, multi, at the sort of asset class level for multi-asset portfolios, we think about that in terms of having the U.S. as an anchor market uh, and then an EM exposure as well, which you know, hasn't done great. But that's, that's one of the key beneficiaries for uh, if these uh, trade worries turn around. Anchor in a good sense. A good anchor. A good anchor, not <laughs> one that pulls you down. Ben, thank you. Yeah, Bob, thank, thank so you as well. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.